Welcome to Tailboard Talk, a fourth shift fit cast. The mission of Tailboard Talk and the fourth shift fitness is to educate and train fire service personnel to increase durability and decrease the potential for injuries and their associated costs. My name is Chris Morella, owner and founder of Fourth Shift Fitness. I'll use my experience as a personal trainer, strength coach, and 15-year veteran of the fire service to deliver tips, tricks, lessons, and information specifically geared towards the health and wellness of firefighters and paramedics. Each episode, you'll leave with immediate deliverables that will improve performance and resilience and keep you in the fight through your career and into retirement. Let's get into it. Excitement. Excitement in the air, sitting in a room alone, drinking wine, cheering for myself. Ah, it's kind of weird, but we are, uh, this is the one year anniversary, almost to the day of, it is to the day, of Tailboard Talk. Been doing it for a year, every other week, <laughs> a huge commitment, every other week for a year. I don't think I missed any weeks, maybe I released one late, but uh, man, did it. And I was going to look up some podcast statistics to say how much better I am than people that quit in their first year, but let's just assume that it's 50%. I'm better than 50% of all people that start a podcast, and not just better, but way better um, for various reasons. We don't have to get into because I can't think of any specifically, but so much better than them. And I guess we should start off by saying thanks. Like, what are we, 27-ish, 28-ish episodes in, and the numbers are um, low, but in a good way. So let me get into that because I've been thinking about this a lot because the numbers are, well, I don't know what they are. I get around, now here's a little peek behind the curtain. I get around 60 to 70 downloads, uh, a week, like when I release one. And then the off week is around 15 to 20 kind of spread amongst episodes and episodes where I have people on so some of the more successful ones have around 200 and then they all kind of grow over the course of time so like this episode will start at 60 or 70 and then a couple months from now it'll be at 90 or 100 they just kind of keep going as people start discovering it or they go back and listen to ones they haven't heard before or whatever Uh, but so I did a lot of thinking about this excuse me and uh, it's pretty sweet because I was watching Brett Bartholomew on Instagram Live today. Just I just dropped in real quick for about five or six minutes. And he said that he had 90,000 Instagram followers. And that when he releases a product or when he uh, sends out an advertisement or something like that for a new release, 2% or less buy something. So when he has a call to action, less than 2% of his 90,000 people that follow him on social media buy something. Um, and I think there's a bunch of factors and context to be put into that too, but what I have is around 60 people who listen on a semi-regular basis, and my engagement in those 60 people is far greater than 2%. Now, engagement is different than me selling something to people buying, but even then, when I sold the shirts and the stickers and stuff, it was awesome. It was like uh, almost 50% if I'm going by that number, so... It's kind of something that we built at LGN, the gym I used to work for and at, um, is that it was smaller. It was smaller. At that time, it was mostly small group training, so uh, six or less. And then we had some fitness classes that were 12 or less, I think, at the time. And so the total membership, I think it only ever got to like 120 or 130 while I was there. But it was all people that you wanted to like hang out with after class. Like You didn't mind if the class ended and you hung out and... We're stretching with people and talking for 10, 15 minutes. That was a vast majority of the membership. And then we would look at bigger gyms in the the area or like the big box gyms or really, really super successful gyms online uh, that had like high profile trainers and stuff. And uh, we're like, oh, that's cool, but we don't want to hang out with those people. Like that's not what we want to do. We don't want to run around with our shirts off and be super sexy all the time. Not that we have a choice, but just saying. Uh, so we built this small community and it was an awesome community. And I feel like really that's what this has become. The amount of feedback I get on episodes, the amount of people I get reaching out. Um, every time I've felt like this is going nowhere and it's bumming me out 
because uh, I see other people's success and I compare myself to that far too often. But it never fails that just coincidentally someone will reach out within that week or week and a half and just like drop a line, you know, like, hey, that was a really cool episode. Thanks for talking to that person or, you know, cool topic or thanks for addressing that or you're talking about stuff that few people do or putting a more human face on fitness because fitness is kind of goofy, right? Um, and so you are, if you're one of those people who have reached out to me, thank you. Like that, I can't tell you the number of times that I've been like, I'm not going to release one this week. I'll wait another two weeks because I, whatever, no big deal. Nobody's going to miss it, you know. And when I get those uh, those little messages, and Katie also makes me do it, you know. She calls me on my shit all the time about consistency and sticking with something. Um, so thank you to her as well. Now, if you're not one of those people that's reached out and been like, hey, good job, thanks for nothing. I mean, thank you for nothing. You do nothing for me. Just kidding. Thank you for listening. <clears throat> and I hope that in the, in the future, something will spark your interest to the point where you want to reach out because that is far more valuable to me. And honestly, that's far more value me, re- valuable to me right now than like this thing blowing up and me getting paid for it. Because I'm fortunate, I do have a full-time firefighting job, right? So I have income coming in. Katie's starting to work part-time again. We have we have the ability to make money. Now, not sound like a jerk, but we have that ability. Um, and so this is this gets to be fun. This gets to be a fun thing that I get to do and try to help out a little bit and try to put a, maybe a new spin on fitness and lifestyle stuff. I mean, we're talking about fitness. It's a highly passable subject for a majority of the population, and for you to go out and seek out a fitness podcast. I mean, we can only talk about jumping jacks so friggin' many times. And so the fact that this thing kind of peaked early, uh, I had some really awesome guests on, and then it kind of slowed down a little bit when I started doing the solo act. Um, and that was purely because I just, I loved the people I talked to on those interviews. Like, they were incredible interviews, but I hated the, I hate doing it remotely. I just cannot stand it. It just, it's so awkward. And editing is a pain because um, it just doesn't flow well. And so I tried to take out a lot of like the long conversational pauses in there. So it was just taking a huge time commitment to do it. Good news. Now there is good news of this. I bought an extra microphone and a multi-channel recorder. Um, And we also have a camper now. So my plan is to do in-person interviews, do in-person talks. Katie's going to be on more regularly. I have my other friend, my only other friend. I have my, another friend who I don't want to release his name yet, um, but he's agreed, at least casually, to be a more regular voice on here. It's going to be a big deal, though. Um, and so this gets to be a fun thing, and it gets to be kind of a goofy thing. And I think I've really kind of found more of my voice on here in the past couple of months kind of worrying about it less, just kind of letting it rip and then posting it. And as long as I don't say anything too stupid or misrepresent my department or, yeah, really just say anything too stupid, I'm fine with letting it fly. So uh, thank you. If you hung out for a year, thank you. This is going to be a short episode like they all are. Short episode because that's the crux I wanna, of what I want to talk about. And it's amazing. I, I, w- I didn't write anything down because – I had been kind of running through topics all day long, and I thought of a lot of, I had a lot of cool conversations in my head, um, and I thought, oh, they'll come back to me while I'm talking, and now none of them are. There's nothing coming back to me. Um, so maybe we'll just leave it at that. Short episode, right? One year anniversary of Tailboard Talk. Thank you. Please reach out. Please say hi. If you got a story you want to tell, let me know. If you're local to the Chicagoland area, even better, because we could do it in person at least 10 feet apart because the world's crumbling again, obviously, but we can give it our best shot. In the meantime, you're going to hear from me, from Katie Moore, my other friend, my only other friend. Man, it sounds really sad when I say it like that. I don't mean to say it like my my one friend. I mean to say like another person that I work with who is also my friend, all right? Like I said, I'm in a room alone right now cheering for myself drinking wine, but I'm not that sad, I promise. It's called being relatable. Anyways, thanks, guys having a great time let's keep it going here's to the next year of tailboard talk maybe more than once every other week we'll see and uh as always reach out force shift fit at gmail.com force shift fitness and all social media that's it talk to you guys soon be a force shifting